What's going on everybody? Johnny Bannon here and we're going to finish up domain 1.3 of our Network Plus N10-009 certification video series. So let's go ahead and do it. Let me zoom my face out here and now let's go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so in these exam objectives, we're going to go over kind of uh, if we actually look at the network plus exam objectives let me bring them up for you guys here this is just kind of like almost the advanced features i was kind of talking about not necessarily advanced just additional software and features that are part of the cloud so our first video in domain 1.3 went over this section the fundamentals and now we're going to go over i'm not going to call it advanced it's just like features of the cloud okay so the first thing we're going to talk about is network function virtualization. So NFV decouples network functions like routing, uh, fire, firewalling, firewalls, load balancing, intrusion detection, DNS for proprietary hardware, and then implements it on software, which essentially we're saying we virtualize a lot of these functions. So let's just take a kind of break down what we're talking about here. So if I wanted to run a firewall, uh, hardware based. So I want to buy an actual appliance. How do I do that? I go to a vendor, an authorized reseller, and I now have to pick between Palo Alto, Fortinet, Cisco, maybe an open source like PFSense. That's proprietary. That's going to run on a piece of hardware that I have to go buy from a vendor, have a life cycle and all that. If I want to do DNS, um, if I want to do load balancing, maybe I have to go to like F5 or Big IP, get a load balancer. So we have these network functions. If I want to do uh, some BGP um, route reflection, where I want to deploy, you know, maybe I want a bunch of routers doing BGP route reflection. Well, routers are a physical appliance. But if maybe there's a way I don't have to go buy these thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars from Cisco to do that, I can just virtualize it. So we take these network functions and we put them on a virtualization solution, which is essentially, yes, just like deploying a VM, but it's more specific to network functions. So we give it a name, right? A fancy name. And NFV is actually going to enable us to do SDN, software defined networking, where we actually manage network resources in a control plane. So NFV, if you look at my chart down here, you can see how the infrastructure is kind of laid out. So we're going to have our physical resources still. It's going to be our compute, memory, and network resources. Storage as well. We have our hardware. And then we have our virtualization layer. Imagine that virtualization layer as like a hypervisor. That's like a type 1 or a type 2 hypervisor. So then we virtualize these resources. And then we allocate these resources into a virtual, virtualized network function. Now service providers can do this for customers. We can do this on our own enterprise. So the virtualization allows for better flexibility, better scalability and efficiency in deploying and managing these network services. So some advantages of NFV is cost efficiency, flexibility and scalability. So it allows you to rapidly deploy. And with NFV, when I talked about the console, like so software defined networking, that is how we do networking in the cloud, right? So you want to look at like a cloud service provider. Their control plane, their portal is technically for using it just for network resources, management and orchestration of all those NFVs of the network functions virtualization. Okay. Now there's on-prem solutions for this as well, like VMware, which is Broadcom now, right? We'll have their own solutions for this. But Okay. Moving on. Now let's talk about a VPC. Now we're talking about the big three cloud service providers. They all do this a little bit different. The fundamentals are the same, but they may not call it a VPC, right? Uh, we call it a VNet in Azure. Uh, and then AWS, I think, calls it a VPC. But essentially, this is a segmented, isolated subnet in your public cloud deployment that gives you some sort of isolation. So like in Azure, I do this by creating a VNet. And then within that VNet, I create multiple subnets. That's an example of a VPC. It's just called VNets in Azure. VPCs are called VPCs in AWS though. So a VPC allows us to do peering between like maybe geographically dispersed 
uh, regions and zones in the cloud. It gives us that isolation. It allows us to have better security because now we can start applying ACLs or network security groups, kind of a cloud version of that, to these VPCs. And then we deploy resources in those VPCs. So imagine, right, I have a region. And again, this is, I teach Azure a lot. So I'm going to try to make this as third party as possible, right? So imagine we want to deploy a VM. A VM, we want to deploy a, a, a you know, an S, uh, what's AWS? An S3 bucket. Storage, storage, right? We want a VM, so EC2 instance in AWS. Um, I said I was going to make this not proprietary, but anyways, we want to deploy a VM and some storage. So we put that, those resources in the East region. But now, maybe these resources are for a department. Maybe they're for the accounting department. We want a way to logically segment them via the network. So what we could do is create like VPC accounting, place those resources in that VPC, and then start applying some filtering and some isolation and segmentation to that to kind of separate those resources at a, a logically in our cloud environment. So we can start adding network security group rules on there, network security list on there, right? To the actual VPC, and then that is going to apply to all those resources. And it's a great segue into what we're about to talk about here, a network security group. So the this is a component of securing a VPC. So they're going to act as essentially virtual firewalls that control traffic to and from cloud resources based on defined rules within a VPC. So shout out to the Microsoft. I'm going to put it in the description. The images coming up are all from the Microsoft website. Um, but this shows you uh, how we could apply these network security groups to a whole VPC, this whole subnet here. So this VNet, we have this subnet, and we can apply NSGs at different levels to resources within that. But at a high level, all this is doing is it's filtering, just like a firewall would have done, right? A little confusing because we can have firewalls, you know, in a cloud resource. Then we have NSGs, network security groups, but they're filtering. At the, at the end of the day, they're a filtering mechanism. Uh, there's inbound and outbound rules, and it controls the flow to and from resources uh, via layer 3, 4, even layer 7. Uh, NSGs and Azure are layer 3 and 4, and then application security groups are layer 7. But anyways, there's CompTIA, CompTIA. And then network security list. They're similar to NSGs, but they operate at a broader network level, typically controlling traffic at the subnet level rather than the individual instance level. Okay, so that's the definition for network security list for uh, the Network Plus exam. All right, now let's talk about Internet Gateway. So again, a very broad strokes uh, term here. To describe just a resource that's going to be in the cloud that allows your cloud-based resources to reach out to the Internet, Okay. So think of this as like a router that you would typically have in your on-prem, but the internet gateway is saying, hey, now we're in the cloud. We have resources that may sit here on a virtual network. We may not give them a public IP individually. So we have an internet gateway that's going to allow internet traffic into that virtual private cloud instance. So this is an AWS image of this. This is an Azure image of this. And you can see that they're essentially doing the same thing. And then moving on, NAT gateway, a NAT gateway, internet gateway, very similar. It really just depends what kind of cloud environment you're using. But with the NAT gateway, now we're doing that traditional translation that you would see on-prem, right? With a NAT gateway, this is a cloud service or resource that says, hey, cool, you have your resources behind this VPC or this VNet. And they're all private IPs. They're all RFC 1918 addresses. Well, I'm going to have this NAT gateway that has a public IP that's doing the translations for you. And that could be a resource that you deploy and control yourself from your cloud console. And lastly, we're going to talk about is cloud connectivity. So how do we connect off to the cloud? So a lot of different ways we can do it. Uh, a lot of, you know, the, the ways that we describe in the Network Plus exam are VPNs and Direct Connect. So we kind of deep dived on VPNs in the last section. So I'm not going to go over what a VPN does, but essentially our on-prem, we could build like an IPsec tunnel directly to a VNet, to a VPC 
in our cloud resources to give us direct access to some resources in our cloud architecture, but not all resources. So that could be like an IPsec tunnel. We could also have a direct connect, which is almost like the traditional you know, circuits we used to have. But what this is, is a dedicated network connection between your on-prem and a cloud service provider. So to the actual provider. Uh, this is like a closed off circuit, right? Dedicated from on-prem to the CSP. All right, guys, now let's go do our quiz. Domain 1.3.2 quiz. Let's go ahead and do it. So question one, what is the key difference between a network security group and a network security list in a VPC? So I don't know if I even touched this on the slides. That's okay though. So NSGs are going to provide stateful filtering while NSLs provide stateless filtering. Okay, so a little difference there. Question two, which of the following best describes the primary function of a network address translation gateway in a virtual private cloud? So which of the following best describes? I'm going to go with B here to allow instances in a private subnet to access the internet without allowing inbound internet traffic. So essentially what we're saying here is that uh, we're going to be allowed out to talk to the internet, but internet resources, they'll be able to talk to us, but that NAT gateway, essentially, they're connecting to that NAT gateway, and then that's kind of sending the traffic to us. So they're not making direct connections to any of our resources in that VPC or private subnet. Question three, which cloud service allows an organization to establish a private high bandwidth connection between its on-premise data center and a cloud service provider bypassing the public internet? So we're not going through the public internet here. That's going to be a direct connect. Kind of like those traditional circuits we used to have between our offices, right? Question four. What is the primary purpose of an internet gateway in a cloud environment? It's going to go, I'm going to go with C. To connect a virtual private cloud to the public internet, enabling inbound and outbound traffic. And there we go. Question five. Which of the following is a key advantage of using network function virtualizations in a cloud environment? I'm going to go with D here, the simplified and accelerated deployment of network services. Simplified. Yeah, it's simple, but sometimes it adds complexity, right? <laughs> we don't have dedicated hardware, but that's okay. I know what, what it's trying to say there is like, hey, you don't need all this uh work with all these VARs and vendors and dedicated hardware that's limited, right? We can virtualize things and make it more uh, flexible. Okay, last question. In the context of cloud security, what is the primary role of a network security group within a VPC? So I'm going to go with A, to control and monitor traffic at the instance level based on defined security rules. Awesome. And look here, we got 100%. All right, everyone, I want to thank you for viewing. Uh, feel free or no, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next video. We get into domain 1.4 and we're going to be finishing up this Network Plus course.